Seven, six, five, four, three, two.
This is Brad Mills for the Salem Card Show in Salem, Indiana, inviting you out to our next show on May the 6th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Washington County Fairgrounds in Salem, Indiana. We will have over 50 tables of sports cards, non-sports cards, including Pokemon, sports memorabilia, sports card collecting supplies, modern and vintage cards. This is a great place to buy, sell, or trade your cards. Admission is free. Families are always welcome. Please follow us on all social media at Salem Card Show. Is your ride not as reliable as it used to be? Eddie Gilstraps is the place to go. With 80 years in the auto industry, we know how to get things done. At Eddie Gilstrap Motors, we have an unbeaten level of commitment to buyers. Unmatched customer service, a wide array of new and used inventory, and various financing options are just a few of the ways in which we serve our customers. Give us a call at 877 227 9421. That's 877 227 9421. Or just visit our website. We all make choices. When it comes to alcohol, kids make choices whether to drink or not. Bye, Dad. Bye bye. Remember, I'm going to Alex's party tonight and sleeping over. Yeah, have fun. Hey, Em, have a seat for a second. Remind me about that party again. Alex is just and coming. adults make choices whether to talk about it. That's true of parents and every other trusted adult in a kid's life. Kids want to know our expectations when it comes to alcohol and other drugs. They want guidance and honest answers to their questions. And it makes a difference when the message is consistent and part of everyday conversations. So talk with your kids and help lead them on a positive path. Because when you talk, they hear you. For more information about talking with your kids about underage use of alcohol and other drugs, visit underagedrinking.samsa.gov. Michael Long with American Family Insurance offers auto, home, business, farm, and life insurance, which includes motorcycles, boats, ATVs, UTVs, classic and antique autos, renters, manufactured homes, rentals, along with event coverage such as weddings, golf hole-in-ones, conferences, and much, much more. He's licensed in Indiana, Ohio, and Florida. For more information, look him up on Facebook to see insurance tips and to sign up for his agency giveaways. Michael Long, American Family Insurance, all your protection under one roof. I like the power deck. You lift it up, clean your deck out, then wash it out. And you know, I can change those blades in approximately five minutes. In our terrain, we have to have a mower that can back up quick, turn quick. Nothing's ever stopped that mower. When it comes to vaping, the truth can get clouded. So let's make it clear. Vaping is not safe for kids, teens, or young adults. It's just not. Because vaping can put microscopic particles into your lungs. And dangerous things like metals and volatile organic compounds into your body. And nicotine, the same highly addictive substance found in regular cigarettes. Nicotine can harm a person's brain development through their mid-20s. Affecting learning, memory, attention, and impulse control and priming the brain for other addictions. Vaping products also come in kid-friendly flavors that can make them appealing to youth. And many kids also use other drugs, like marijuana, in vaping devices. With appealing flavors, high nicotine levels, and lots of promotion on social media. Many kids think vaping is harmless, but it's not. So talk to your kids about the risks of vaping, because when you talk, they hear you. At Eddie Gilstrap, our customers are family. Rated in the top 6% nationwide in Ford dealers, we pride ourselves on our no-pressure environment, honesty, and integrity. Come see us today and discover why we're different. Eddie Gilstrap Motors. I'm David Calhoun, Grass Clippings LLC. During the summer, I'm on this thing 8, 10 hours a day. I know the feel of it. Grasshopper means quality. They don't fall apart. I've looked at all of them in the industry. I don't think nothing can stand up to them. Links Clothing and Shoes is proud to support West Washington Senator football and wish them a great season. 
Stop by and see us for all your school fan gear. We offer a wide variety of tees, hoodies, hats, and more. We also offer custom screen printing and embroidery for your team, business, or event. We are conveniently located on the north side of the Salem Square and have been serving our community for over 15 years. Our hours are Monday through Friday, 9 to 5.30, and on Saturdays, they're 9 to 3. Stop in or call us at 812-883-4154. That's 812-883-4154. Shop local and save. As your American Family Insurance agent, Michael Long can offer you dependable auto, home, business, and life insurance, as well as other insurance products. He's big enough to serve and small enough to care. His team and their unique backgrounds, trainings, and experiences have prepared them well to help meet your insurance needs. Additionally, as residents of your community, they understand how important it is to be there for you. Together, they are building strong partnerships that help everyone succeed. When it comes to your car insurance, you deserve more than a card tucked in your glove box. That's why American Family Car Insurance goes beyond a piece of paper or an app to give you smart, customized coverage and real peace of mind. No matter how your life changes, you can feel comfortable you will have the right auto insurance protection and support every step of the way. Not sure how much or what type of coverage is right for you? Michael Long is the person to talk to. Right, brothers. We're more than tractors. Stop in and take a look around. You'll be surprised. Right here on Highway 60 in Borden. Welcome, we're live here at West Washington High School for tonight's semifinal round of sectional number 61, a uh, day later than what was originally scheduled. Normally, we'd be getting ready for the sectional final here tonight, but due to the uh, rash of storms that uh, went through the area yesterday, a lot of these uh, a lot of these schools that are in this sectional didn't have school, and uh, you know that caused the delay in the sectional. Several sectionals around the uh, the state were uh, were off on Friday night due to those storms. But uh, back here live tonight for our semifinal round tonight, featuring the first game here of the evening, as uh, South Central Elizabeth will take on the Borden Braves. Of course, Borden advancing uh, to the uh, this second round with a win over the host school here, West Washington, on uh, back on Tuesday night. And then our second game tonight will feature the uh, Lanesville Eagles taking on uh, the Rock Creek Academy Lions, who Rock Creek also advanced on Tuesday night with kind of an upset victory, I think, on paper. A lot of people felt like 
Christian Academy would uh, would get out of that one. But Rock Creek played uh, exceptionally well, played a great game, and uh, and they advanced to uh, the second uh, semifinal of the night here. Joining me once again for the broadcast here on West Washington Livestream and WWSR is uh, my partner in crime, the professor, Craig Akers, here with us tonight. So, Craig, uh, uh, another matchup here tonight of two teams that are familiar with each other. They played uh, back earlier in the year down at South Central. Uh, Borden coming out with a two-point victory in that one. So this first game on paper looks like it could be a, another tight matchup. But I tell you, uh, you know, uh, same as what uh, the Braves did the other night with West Washington, it seems like Coach Nash always finds an answer when his team is, uh, you know, maybe down a little bit. West Washington had them down seven points heading into that fourth quarter. And uh, the Braves put on the press and, uh, you know, it give, give the Senators some fits and, and uh, Morton was able to advance. So, uh, you know, anytime you've got a state champion coach on the sideline, uh, sometimes it can make a difference. But uh, I know uh, South Central uh, has had a good year as well as, you know, they, I think 14-9 and nine is what they finished up. So. Yeah, you're, you're right, 14-9. and nine. You know, both of these teams – like you said, are familiar with each other. They played earlier in the year at South Central where South Central was able, or sorry, Borden was able to come out with a two-point victory. Um, but if you're looking for somebody to game plan against a team and you give them, you know, three or four days, Doc yeah. Nash is a, a pretty good one to, to have. Um, you know, tonight it's going to come down to can Borden do what they did against the Senators in the first round of play and can they do what they've done all season? Yeah. You know, when they want to speed the game up, they do. When they want to slow it down and play in the half court, they can. If you want to match stud for stud, they've got Casey Nash, who, you know, can probably put him up against just about any shooter in the state. Um, you know, they can they kind of do it all. Now, South Central is more of a, a team effort. Um, you know, they do have, have some scores. They're pretty balanced through their whole team on scoring. They've got one guy averaging in double digits, um, but then they've got three that are right around the, the seven to nine point range. You know, so all of their kids can can score. They don't rely on just one to get it done. Um, but, you know, if you're if you're talking about basketball in Indiana in March, this is what it is. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, these games come down to, you know, you, you've got some seniors on, on both teams that don't want to play their, uh, their last basketball game. Of course, uh, South Central with a couple seniors in, Cole Stewart and Ty Jones, and then uh, Borden uh, as well. Uh, with the Kennedy, uh, Agnew, um, I was thinking there was one more. From, nope, that's only two they've got, too. Yeah. So, you know, uh, you know th those kids, I'm sure they're telling their teammates, hey, look, this is my last opportunity. Let's go win a sectional. And, you know, uh, anything can happen in sectional play. We've seen that over the years, you know, that uh, everybody's even. So when you come in, the records really don't mean anything. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and even if they do, these two teams are pretty well yep, balanced. They're balanced. You know, South Central is 14 and 9. Borden is 17 and 7. So, right. You know. And Borden's won a lot of close games. You yeah. know, they, they've uh, – but there again, that goes back to the, a testament to, to their coaching and their staff uh, and their kids. I mean, they, they've been able – they don't get panicked. Uh, you know, we've seen that the other night. They got down a little bit, but they fought their way back. And – and, you know, ended up getting the victory. So, um, you know, both of these teams, like I said, it, it, it's it's all even up. It, it comes down to grit, determination, who's going to do the little things correctly. And a lot of times those little things like rebounding, boxing out, getting loose balls on the floor, you know, sometimes the hustle play can go a long way in these kind of games. And I look for that here tonight in this, in this first game. Now, yeah. That being said, I also feel like if Casey Nash gets going real good, you know, West Washington did a good job not letting him get going uh, the other night in that first uh, first round game. And, um, you know, I think if he goes off for 20-plus, then it's going to be hard for South Central. Well, and if you look at Borden's scores overall, if you hold them to less than 40 points, uh, this may sound like an obvious statement, but they don't win. That right. When they score yeah, over 40, exactly. that's when they're able to beat teams. So if you're able to play solid defense and slow this game way down, you know, they're they're a beatable team. You know, Providence, they only, Borden only scored 21 points against Providence. You know, they got beat by Greenwood Christian at 38 points. Right. Um, 
Orleans, they only scored 26. So when you know you hold them to very few points, that that's the recipe for beating them. If you want to get up and down with them, that's you know when they're scoring in the 50s and 60s, they're a hard team to beat because they're so good on knocking down shots. They've got so many kids who shoot such a high percentage. Right, and I felt like the West Washington did did that to them the other night. You know, they slowed them down. You know, they they didn't get. To, uh, a whole lot of points there early, and they didn't get Nash going. And, you know, so that's what you got to do. You just got to slow boarding down. They're going to get theirs, but if you can slow them down and, and make sure that they don't get multiple possessions right. on the offensive end, and that was something also in that game the other night that we saw that, you know, they were able to get several possessions, sometimes get some offensive rebounds, reset their offense, and, and get a good play out of it. And, well, you know, that's something you just can't do. And when you look at Borden, there's not anybody who's overly tall on their team. You know, their, their tallest kid's 6'2", um, but their their guards, their forwards do a great job of boxing out. They get in good position. Right. They're well coached. They're coached how to block out and how to get those rebounds over, you know, guys who are bigger than them because they put their body in the way and block out, you know, how you're supposed to. Um, you know, South Central, the same same thing. They don't have a, you know, a 6 Four six five guy on their team. Um, you know, if you're looking for six four six five, watch the next game. Rock Creek's got two. Yeah. <laughs> so right. you know that that's that's one of the things. You know, both of these teams, whoever advances, if Rock Creek is able to advance out of the second game against Lanesville, somebody's going to have a, a huge size difference. Um, you know, in that game, these two teams fairly well even. You know, with their size. Yes, so. absolutely. I, you know, I think you you look down the rosters. You know. Uh, you see a, a, a 6'4 in uh, the Compton kid from uh, the freshman, actually, from Borden. And then you see one 6'4, the heading kid, uh, number 40, the junior for South Central. So, you know, like you said, evenly matched as far as size. There's no big disadvantage there. It, it, and there again, that re emphasizes my former statement. You got to do the little things. You yeah. got to box out. You've, you've got to go for the. Uh, the boards, you got to go for loose balls because, you know, you don't have a big guy inside that's going to be able to pull down uh, multiple rebounds just because he's bigger than everybody. All right. You know, I think the key to tonight's game is going to be turnovers. Oh, yeah. Whether it's whether it's forced turnovers or unforced turnovers, you know, what, what got the Senators beat in the first game with, with Borden was we had four out-of-bounds plays where we turned it over. Yes. You know, if, if – you know, those don't happen. That game is is might be different now, and you'd see the Senators on the floor. So I think it comes down to limiting those turnovers and the timely turnovers. When you're when yeah. you're in a stretch of you know you're struggling, don't turn it over and keep those keep that momentum for the other team rolling. Where you know you if you limit those, you know if you have ten or less in the game, right. you're probably in pretty good shape. Yeah, I got to take care of the basketball. That's. That's a big key for both both squads, and you know I think Borden does a good job with that. They're yeah. just well disciplined. South Central, you know, the same really. They they've done a pretty good job with that as well. So, um, you know, I think I think it could be a good basketball game yeah. here. And, and you know, I know uh, South Central got quite a crowd that's shuffled in here. Borden, we knew yeah. was going to have a big crowd here. The, so the second key to tonight's game, I think, is Borden has played five games on this court. They have. It's South Central like has home not court. played yeah, here they yet. Have not. You know, this is their first game of sectional. Right. You know, they had to buy the first round. Borden has played five here. This is like their second home. Yeah. Yeah. And Borden's, uh, you know, had some success. So yeah. we'll see what happens here. We're just about ready to uh, take a break here for our national anthem and then we'll be back with the starting lineups here in tonight's contest as the clock winds down here from West Washington High School here in the T. Kermit Tower Gymnasium on the Ron Smith Court as we're about ready for sectional basketball here. Sectional number 61 semifinal round coming to you live here on West Washington live stream and WW. SR. So we're going to pause, we're going to hear that national anthem, and then we will be back here for our starting lineups in this first round game here of the semifinal. Oh. 
say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Back in two, right, definitely. Three, two. All right, back here live as we're ready for the starting lineups in this contest here tonight against the South Central Rebels, who will be the visitors here on the scoreboard tonight. The Borden Braves will be the home team here for the non starters for South Central. Number 24, Cole Stewart. Number 20, Kai Jones. Number Number three, La Russell Lassiter. Number, Number 32, Wyatt Johnson. Number 11, Peyton Tyree. Number, 11, Peyton Tyree. Number 13, Tanner Smith. Number, 13, Tanner Number, Smith. 40, Number 40, Ethan Head. 23, Kate Bogan. Bogan. And number 30, Ronnie Wren. And number 22, Cole Thomas. And now for the starters for South Central, Coach Greg Robinson is Rebels here this evening as we get the starters for South Central okay, introduced now, the for the Rebels. For the Rebels. At one guard, number four, Jarrett Faree. He is a sophomore, 5'11 guard. Number 20, Kai Ty Jones. Number 20, Kai, Ty Jones will start as well. He's a senior. Number 22, Cole Thomas will also get the start. He's a sophomore, 6'2". At one forward, Christian Kuyper, a junior, at 6'1", and a sophomore. And the other starter for them will be, uh, which one was that? 40. Uh, I missed 40, okay, yeah, I couldn't, couldn't get him there. He is Ethan Head, and he will also start for the Rebels, 6'4", and a uh, junior for South Central. And now for the Borden Braves, their starters here tonight. At one guard, number 11, Alex Schuler will get the start. He is a junior for Coach Doc Nash. Number 21, Kaysom Nash will start for his father here tonight, a junior as well. Missy, uh, number uh, 31, will get the start. He's a sophomore, A.J. Agnew. We'll start at one forward, six foot, and a senior. And also number 32, Keith, will get the start as well. Four board, Xander Keith, the uh, sophomore as well. Six one for Coach Doc Nash. So that's the starters in this ball game tonight as we're about ready to get this one underway here from West Washington as Borden, the home team, as we mentioned, South Central will be these visitors on the score, scoreboard here this evening for uh, tonight's game. So we're about ready to get this thing underway here as we mark our starters down here. And it looks like number 31, Missy, will jump ball against number 40, heading here for the Rebels. All right, so we're ready to go now. 
Ball go in the air. It goes up, head and controls the tip, but Borden, uh, no, nope, ball still on the ground and tipped away as Borden tries to steal it. And it will go to... Yeah, it's going to go to South Central. Ball tipped out of bounds yeah. by the Braves, so it'll go back uh, to the Rebels here as uh, they uh, will control possession. Thomas looks to inbound here. A little confusion to start yeah. off the game here. Yeah, the official just needs to call it and get things going. If they'll inbound, it'll come into free. He'll control it for South Central. Looks far side, now goes back doors. He gets it down low to Kuiper. He loses it, now kicks it back out as he gets it out to Faree. He'll spin, put up a shot. No good, rebound pulled down by Agnew, and the Braves back the other way. He'll get it off to Missy on the far side. Missy will pull it back out. Now they'll set things up here for the offense. Schuler with it, now back out high. It'll come to Keith, far side to Agnew as he controls it. Missy now gets it out to Casey Nash. He'll pull it down, deep three-pointer. Off the mark, a high rebound pulled down by 22 Thomas, and he'll bring it up for the Rebels. He gets it across, gets it off there to Faree. Faree with it. Looking, gets it over to Hedden. Now in the corner, it goes there to number 20 Jones. Jones spins around, kick, dishes it off, shot up by number 10 there. Kuiper, he misses it, and the rebound pulled down by Keith for the Braves. He'll get it off to Missy, far side, who kicks it over there to Shuler. Shuler with it. On the far wing, he'll wheel around. Hands it off there to 32, Keith. Keith now over here to Missy. Missy here on the near wing in front of us. He'll dribble it back out. Reset the offense as he'll hand it off to Schuler. Kind of surprised they got Nash actually yeah. playing down on the block and kind of bringing him out. But uh, they'll spin around, look at a shot. Off to Agnew, far side. Now back to Missy. Missy pulls it down, dribbles in the free throw line, gets cut off. Dishes it out there to Keith. Keith now out to Nash, who draws a double team and a steal, and a turnover by the Rebels turn Borden over as they knock it away from uh, Nash there. They'll drive down low, spin to the bucket, and score. 22 Thomas up, he gets the first bucket of the night, and it's two to nothing South Central. Back the other way they come with it, do the Braves. Missy with it here in front of us on the near wing. He looks. I'm trying to set something up here. He'll set the screen there by Agnew, go around it. Looking down there now, ooh, almost traveled almost with travel. it. Yeah, he kicks it out as it comes back out to Schuler. He'll drive in the lane, throws up a one-handed runner, couldn't get the roll, and it's tipped out, but it's gonna be a foul called against Borden on the rebound, as it looks like 32 Keith got, was guilty there. Yeah, and that is the call, so he'll get the first foul tonight. His first, team's first, and South Central will get the ball back here, two to nothing, and they'll inbound, it'll come into free. Free with it. He'll get it off far side there to Jones. Jones looking, now gets it in the middle to Hedden. Hedden with it, back over to Free. He drives. Now he gets cut off there, pretty good defense. Now back door, they burn him again, and Thomas has get it, got his second bucket, and the Rebels lead four to nothing here. Back the other way now for the Braves, still looking for their first point. Missy with it, goes back door, loses it, and another turnover there, that's twice now. The Braves will turn it over. Free back up quickly with it. He gets cut off. Now hands it off there to Thomas. Thomas kicks to Hedden. He'll pull it down. 15-footer. Couldn't get it to go. Rebound by Kaysom Nash for the Braves. Nash back the other way quickly. Boy, this has been up and down more so than what I thought it would be. Yeah, and if you watch on defense, South Central is doubling Kaysom many time he touches it. Keith gets a deep three from the corner to go, and Braves get their first bucket of the night. South Central four, Borden three. Back up the other way for South Central as Faree will bring it across the timeline. He'll hand it off there to Kuiper. Kuiper with it, looking, drives, dishes, as he gets it off there to uh, number 20 once again, Jones. Now they get it to Faree. Inside, tipped away, turn over South Central. Nash comes out of the pile with it. He'll pull it up, shoot it deep and off the glass, and he got the bounce to go. And the Braves take their first lead, five to four. Back the other way, Thomas gets it off to Free. Far side, it'll go back to Jones. And they're gonna call a foul on the floor here. I believe that's yeah, gonna go against Borden as well. I think they're gonna get Alex Schuler yeah. on that. Foul number 11, Alex Schuler. 
That is called first, first and the team second here. So the Rebels will inbound Jones to inbound for South Central. He gets it into Thomas. Thomas gets double team, pulls it down, and they call a travel on him. So a turnover there. Looks like there's a lot of activity going on there between uh, Thomas and, uh, and Schuler down there on the block. Messi involved in that as well. So official talking to both of them now. So the Rebels turn it over and give it back to the Braves. Borden five, South Central four here. 4.03 to go here in this first quarter of play. Messi will bring it up for the Braves. He'll dish it off there to 31. That's, or excuse me, Messi with it now. Sheila brought it up. Now they'll hand it off. It'll go to Nash. Kaysen with it. And almost a turnover, but Borden gets it back as Messi picks it up. Now it is turned over as they steal it away again. And they're going to call a double dribble on Kuiper. So we're going to get a turnover and a turnover back yeah. the other way. So both teams turned it over each possession there uh, on that possession, and it'll go back to the Braves. I didn't see a double dribble there. I, but no, I didn't either, but. I don't think the officials saw one of the Borden players, you know, hit the ball. I think he thought the kid picked it up and then took off again with the dribble, but that wasn't the case, but that was the call. So Missy with it, he'll hand it off there. It'll go to Keith. Keith back out high to Missy for the Braves. Missy now looking, tipped away. I'll tell you, South Central's yeah. got really quick hands. The hands are in there the whole time. Yep. Agnew with it. He'll dribble far side. This is it off to Keith. Keith now to Missy in the corner. Missy will drive, stop, lays one up, and he gets fouled. I believe that's going to go against number four for Ree here. Yeah, nice move there by Missy to make that turn and then get elevated and then get hit on the elbow. That's for Ree's first, the team's first, and that will put Missy at the line. He'll get a couple shots here. Morgan up five to four. And Missy with a chance to build on that lead. The first free throw's hard off the back of the rim, no good. But he'll get another one here with 3.15 to go in the first quarter. Second free throw coming here as Missy will step back up to the line. Judd Missy, the sophomore for Borden at the line. Second free throw's up, he missed them both hard off the back of the rim, rebound pulled down by Faree. And the Rebels back in business here. They'll bring it across the timeline. Free hand run. He'll look here near side, gets it off as he'll get it down there to Thomas. He pulls up deep three-pointer, but he's fouled on the shot as Missy jumps back into him and looks like he's going to go to the free throw line. Borden and uh, Missy's first foul, the team's third. Cole Thomas goes to the line. He's a 85% uh, free throw shooter on the year. So, Well, Thomas is a guy that, that – that they rely on. He's the sophomore, good player. He hits the first free throw here. And he'll get two more of those because yeah. he was shooting the three-pointer. So he ties the game at five. Chance to regain the lead here. Second one's up. It's good as well. He's the only scorer so far yeah. for He's got all their points at this point. And he's been the guy they've been trying to go to. Piper's put up a couple of shots, but for the most part, Thomas is who their offense runs through. Right. Seven to five now, two-point lead for the Rebels. Borden back with it, a little half-court pressure here by South Central. And they get it across through the Braves to Agnew. He'll kick it out. Oh, they look at a three-pointer, no shot taken. Now they drive in the lane, and he throws it away to one of the cheerleaders over there, does <laughs> Schuler. That's she one of those. was the closest one she, to She it. had on white, and he saw white. Yeah, so he I think he did. He, <laughs> I really do think he did. So that's four turnovers for Borden here in this first uh, quarter, and that's unusual for them. You won't see them turn it over that much. Faree with it, brings it across for the Rebels again. Two-point lead for South Central. He'll hand it off there to Kuiper. Kuiper on the attack, pulls it down, shoots it up off the rim, and he got it to go. So he scores his first bucket, and it's nine to five. South Central. Missy back the other way. Tip almost stolen again, but Agnew pulls it down. Now they'll shoot a three out of the corner. Will Schuler, he misses it. Rebound pulled down by the Rebels. Free back up quickly. Nobody picks him up. He drives in there. Now pulls it down. Gets it off there. It goes 220 Jones. He shoots it. He got it to go. That's a really nice spin move there by Jones. 11 to 5. So the uh, Rebels. Uh, on like a 7-0 run here yeah. uh, as they were down 5-4 to four and now up 11-5. to five. They take 
Morton will take a 30-second timeout here. We'll stay with you. You know, the, the Rebels have stretched it out to a six-point lead here. Yeah, six points. Um, I said seven. You know, they were down four early. So, or, sorry, they were up four, then got it cut back to a tie game and yeah. now stretched it back out to six. So, definitely a game of runs there, um, you know, overall for the Rebels. But, um, you know, just like you said, they're looking to go to Thomas the whole time where the – uh, Braves are looking to go to Nash. They just haven't been able to get it to Nash in a spot where he can score. Well, and South Central's been able to turn them over, and that's, you know, that's been huge. Both teams with some turnovers here, but, um, you know, South Central's turnovers have led to points. When they've turned Borden over, they've been able to score. So they're up 11 to 5, a six point lead here on a 7 0 run right now, are the Rebels. Here comes this half-court pressure again by South Central as they get it across the timeline to the Braves. Schuler with it, gets it far side to Missy. Now off to Nash on the far wing. He gets it tipped in another steal. But then and they're going to step out of bounds. They're going to say he stepped on the out-of-bounds line. Oh, I, I thought for sure they turned it over there. Yeah, Derek Fuller-Tucker <laughs> steps into the game. Yeah, Tucker, uh, Fuller Tucker into the game. Keith also coming into the game for the uh, Braves back into the game here. 11 to five, South Central, Borden with the basketball. Fuller Tucker will touch it the first time. He'll get it off to Keith. Keith with it, dribbles back out high, gets it to Missy. Now over to Fuller Tucker. Fuller Tucker looking, now hands it off. It'll come out to Schuler. Now off to Agnew. Agnew goes in the corner to Keith. Back out to Missy. Missy will drive the lane, puts up a runner, can't get it to go. Rebound heading inside for the Rebels. He got kind of poked in the eye, and they'll get it up to Kuiper. Will South Central, he'll drive, gets blocked by Fuller Tucker, and Missy out and running with it. He'll drive it, dishes to Fuller Tucker. He'll spin, shoots a shot, can't get it. Rebound pulled down there by Kuiper. Kuiper back up as it'll come to Jones. Jones will drive in the lane, pulls up inside the free throw lane, can't get it to go. Agnew with the rebound, back the other way for the Braves. Agnew with it, he'll dish it back outside to Schuler. Schuler will reset the offense here, gets it off to Missy here on the near wing, under a minute to go here in this first quarter. Been a pretty fast yes, pace. Yes, real quarter. fast pace, a lot faster than I thought it might be. Missy with it out high, gets it off, he'll dish it over there to Schuler, back to Missy here with 34 seconds now. South Central all over them in defense. Looking, they'll get it off to Agnew. Agnew hands it back to Missy. Missy now in the attack again. Double team coming, they get it to Fuller Tucker. He almost traveled with yeah. it. Got it off there to uh, Missy. Back to Fuller Tucker. He'll drive, now kicks back to Missy. Now they'll hand it off there to Keith. Keith over to Fuller Tucker. He drives the lane, goes in strong, throws it off the glass and got it to go. So he gets his first bucket. And that's gonna be the end of the first quarter here. South Central is gonna go in with a four point lead. And we'll come back here on your home for sectional 61 West Washington live stream. And we all make choices. When it comes to alcohol, Kids make choices whether to drink or not. Bye, Dad. Bye-bye. Remember, I'm going to Alex's party tonight and sleeping over. Yeah, have fun. Hey, Em, have a seat for a second. Remind me about that party again. Alex is just and adults make choices whether to talk about it. That's true of parents and every other trusted adult in a kid's life. Kids want to know our expectations when it comes to alcohol and other drugs. They want guidance and honest answers to their questions and it makes a difference when the message is consistent and part of everyday conversations. So talk with your kids and help lead them on a positive path. Because when you talk, they hear you. For more information about talking with your kids about underage use of alcohol and other drugs, visit underagedrinking.samsa.gov. All right, back here live, Camelsburg, Indiana, here at West Washington High School. Tonight's first semifinal uh, round game of sectional 61. 
between the South Central Rebels and the Borden Braves. South Central with a four-point lead here as we start the second quarter. Borden will start with possession. Missy with it for the Braves. He'll dish it far side over to Nash. Nash gets, draws the double team again, drives baseline, gets cut off there, and almost stolen, but they're going to call a foul. It looks like number 24 will be called for that. That's Stewart. Stewart That'll be his first. first. Yeah. South Central, about seven or eight guys into their bench right oh, yeah. now. They're doing a good job with the rotation as Stewart gets called for the foul. Braves will inbound. It'll come in to Missy now to Fuller Tucker. Now back to Case of Nash. He'll drive in the lane, goes in strong, throws it up, can't get it, got his own board back up and got fouled again. So he's going to go to the free throw line. And I believe they called it. Who'd they call it on Smith. there? Smith, number 13. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that's who he was calling on, but I couldn't tell. Nash back at the line, or up at the line for the first time tonight. He hits his first free throw to make it a three-point ball game, 11 to eight. So Morton trying to chip back into it here. Nash will step back up there for his second free throw. And that one goes in and out. So the rebound pulled down there by 22 Thomas. He'll get it up quickly to Kuiper. Kuiper with it, gets it off there to number 13 Smith. Now on the far side, back over to Jones. Now back out to Kuiper, he'll pull it down, shoot a deep three, can't get it to go. Battle for the board, ball tipped around. Kuiper comes up with it, off to Jones. Over there for the three by number 13 Smith and he hits it and it's 14 to eight. So. Smith knocks down his first shot of the night. Missy back the other way for the Braves. He gets it baseline, Fuller Tucker. Now he'll drive it back out. Hands it back over to Missy. Missy kicks it out. Three ball in the air, four board, and a kind of an air ball. Rebound by Casey Nash, however. Nash will wheel around, goes back in the lane. And he traveled with it. I've got that as their sixth Six. turnover. Yeah, that's what I got too. So they that's rare for them to turn it over that yeah. much. But... Uh, They've struggled with the basketball. So 14 to eight here, Rebels with a six point lead as they get possession again off another board and turnover. And Thomas to bring it up for South Central. He'll cross over the timeline. And he'll kick it off far side, it'll go to Kuiper. Kuiper back in the corner down there to Thomas. He'll pull it down and shoot it, another air ball. Up in a battle for the board. It goes out of bounds there. Actually, that was Bogan that shot it. And yeah. it's off to the Braves as the ball went out of bounds. So, Borden will regain possession here. They'll kick it in to Missy. He'll hand it off to Fuller Tucker, and he'll bring it up for Borden. He'll cross the timeline now, sets things, dribbles far side. Gets cut off, kicks it back out high to Missy. Missy looking. Now gets it off there to Keith. Keith throws it away again. Another turnover. That's seven yeah. for the Braves here in this first half. Well, Doc has taken Casey Nash yeah. off the floor and told him exactly what he wanted him to do over on the sidelines before he sends him back to the, to the uh, scorer's table to check back in. So South Central inbound. It'll come in to Thomas. He'll bring it across the timeline. Dribbles near side here. Hands it off to Kuiper. Now it goes down in the corner to Bogan. Bogan back out high. They get it over in the corner to Kuiper. Another three up. He can't get it to go. Ball tipped. And finally, Borden comes down with it. They get it up quickly. Fuller Tucker, he'll drive and score it. So he gets his second field goal tonight. And it's 14 to 10. Thomas back off there to Smith. Smith far side to Kuiper. Back out to Thomas. Thomas. Back over here, it comes to Smith. They'll go down low to Bogan. Now back out, tipped away. Turnover by the Rebels. Fuller Tucker again drives the lane, throws it up, and got another roll. So he's got two in a row for Morton, and he pulls them within two here. Yeah, that gives Fuller Tucker six so far for the junior. 14 to 12. Yeah, he's got four in this quarter. They'll kick it off far side to Kuiper. Kuiper will get it back out to Smith here with the Rebels. Now back over to Kuiper. Kuiper back to Smith at the top of the circle. He'll go back to Kuiper far wing. Morton now back in this uh, 
2-3 zone. They'll kick it off to Smith. Now come down to Thomas. He'll drive, kicks out to Kuiper. Deep three ball up, no good. And a battle for the board. Smith gets knocked down. Borden gets it. Up to Fuller Tucker, and he scores another one. And he ties the game at 14. Going to be a 30-second timeout called by South Central. Yeah, that's a, they're trying to stop the bleeding here a little yeah. bit. And you know what's interesting? It's been one of these games where turnovers have, have led to points. Uh, you know, I got South Central for five turnovers, Borden for seven. Uh, but both teams, whenever they have turned it over, the other team's been able to score. And that's what we're seeing now, South Central having a little trouble taking care of the basketball. Well, and, and Borden has gone to that 2-3 zone, and it's almost a, a box of one yeah, it's out almost, of a 2-3. Like so as soon as Thomas steps yeah. into your zone, you're, guarding, you're, going you're, you're yeah. face guarding him. It's almost like a, yeah, like you said, it's almost a box of one, but it's kind of like a 2-3 zone trap or yeah. something. They, once he moves into a certain area of the court, they, they're, they're converging on him. Right. And... Uh, and been a smart move, you know, and that's what we talked about in our pregame. And you know? probably the biggest thing is they've done this without Agnew on the floor and Casey and Nash. Nash. Yeah. All right, back to action here at South Central. We're tied at 14. Rebels with the basketball. They get it far side to Thomas. He draws a crowd, gets out of it. Now Fuller Tucker's going to get called for the foul as he had a hold of him. That's only his first on the six-foot yeah. junior. Fourth team foul on board. So neither team in any kind of foul trouble and a few fouls to give for shooting free throws. So Rebels will uh, inbound it back in. It'll come into free. Now he gets it off there to Jones. Jones now back over to Thomas, back to free. Now to Kuiper, far side to Thomas. He'll get it into Hedden, back to free. Deep travel. travel. Another turnover on South Central. So that's their six. I've got them yeah. four. Well, either we're both really good or we both <laughs> missed them. So I got six yeah. for them also. So, yeah, both teams with a lot of turnovers here in this first half. Borden will get it back with 4.06. They haven't led for a while, actually, since it was uh, seven to six. So Fuller Tucker now another foul, as it looks like Faree kind of tripped into him. Yep. That'll be his second. And that'll be the call, the team's fourth as well. So Braves will get the ball back here to inbound. Smith will check back in for Free, who has those two fouls. So the Braves will inbound, it'll come in to Fuller Tucker. He'll dribble here far side, now dishes it off there to Schuler. back to Fuller Tucker. He'll go around the screen, looks. Now hands it back to Keith, now back out high. Far side, Keith with it. Now back out to number 11, Schuler. Now back to Fuller Tucker. He lost the handle for a second. Tips it over there to Keith. Deep three ball up and good. There by Schuler. Schuler with his first points of the night. And Borden takes the lead, 17 to 14. Kuiper with it. Off to Smith. Now over here it comes to Jones or to Thomas. Thomas far side. Back over there to Smith, a deep three, and he got it. Nice shot there by Thomas. Gives him 10 so far. Yeah, he's leading all scores, ties the game at 17. That back the other way, Fuller Tucker with a runner in the lane, he scores again. He's got 10 now, 19-17. Borden shot up there by Kuiper, no good. Rebound pulled down by Schmidt, and he'll get it up uh, two Fuller Tucker in the corner, and he's going to, nope, call for travel. So another turnover. Turnover number was, eight. Yeah, I thought there was a foul there, but official didn't see it that way. So 19-17, Borden with a two-point lead here. South Central inbound, they get it in, comes into Thomas. He'll kick it in the corner, down there to Jones. Now they get it down low, but they miss a shot, heading with the rebound, back up, back up again, and he gets fouled. So he'll be shooting a couple free throws. Whole crew of Borden Braves down yeah. there that couldn't get a rebound, so. That's gonna go against Schuler. that's his second. Team's fifth, so that'll put Hedden at the free throw line. He hits the first one, that's his first point of the night. He's only a 58% free throw shooter on the year. That was pretty good. Yeah. Nash back into the game for Borden. 
2.35 remaining here in the first half. Agnew comes back in also. Yeah. So. 19-18, heading with his second free throw. It's up, and it rims off the back of the rim. No good. Agnew with the rebound for Borden. He'll get it off to Missy. Now over to Nash, back to Missy. Missy gets it across the timeline, beats everybody, gets a nice pass down low to Fuller Tucker, and he scores again. 21. And that's, and that's what happens when you beat that press yeah. and get in the half court transition. Kuiper out to Thomas, pulls up, free throw line shot, and he got it. I tell you, Thomas is just a scorer. He, yeah. He's got a nice shot. Far side to Keith, back to Agnew for the Braves. Agnew will pull it down, hand it off here to Messi in the corner, Fuller Tucker. He's had the hot hand. He's got 10 in this quarter, 12 in the game. Well, and remember his first two points came with about two seconds left to go in the first quarter. Yeah. So about all of them here in this second quarter, as you could say. Nash with it now. He'll get it back to Fuller Tucker. He'll shoot the three, in and out, no good. Battle for the board down there, and it goes, oh, I said it was out of bounds. Yeah. To it's going to go Borden. to Borden, yeah. Looks like Agnew kind yeah, of stepped on out of bounds. I thought Agnew got his hand on it. I thought he was that. calling, but guess not. Fisher didn't see it that way, so it'll go back to the Braves. Missy the inbounds. Missy the inbound. He'll get it in. It comes in to Nash. Nash will kick it out to Fuller Tucker, pulls up, free throw line. Ah, shot was blocked, but they're going to get a foul. Yeah, going to get a foul on. Uh, I don't know who they Called it on 40, oh. hidden. That's his first, team's fifth, and Fuller Tucker will go to the line. Looking for points 13 and 14 here. So he'll step up there for a couple free throws. Borden up 21 to 20 here. First free throws in and out, no good there by Fuller Tucker. Borden's only one of six yeah. so far for the game. Yeah, they've struggled from the line. He'll get another one, however, with 128 to go here in this first half. Braves 21, Rebels 20. Fuller Tucker's second free throws up, and that one's good, nothing but net. And it's 22 to 20, Borden, as South Central will bring it up. They'll cross the timeline, Thomas with it. He'll kick a far side to Kuiper. Kuiper goes in the corner to Jones. He now cross courts over to Thomas. He'll drive, throws it up. Can't get the shot to go, but he gets fouled. Going to be a foul from behind. I think yep. they're going to get Nash on that one. Yep, Casey Nash will be called for his first foul. Team six, that will put Thomas at the line, shooting a couple of free throws here. His first one's up, and it rims in and out, no good. That doesn't happen very often, an 85% yeah. free throw shooter. He'll get another one here. 111 to go here in this first half of play. Second free throws up, and he got it to go. So a one-point game now, more than 22, South Central 21. Fuller Tucker will bring it up for the Braves across the timeline. He'll dish it in the center to Agnew. Agnew with it. Looking. Can't find anybody there, so he'll step back and dribble. Go on the attack, hands it off. Fuller Tucker, he'll wheel around, drives the lane, throws up a runner, got it to go. And he is hot. Yep. 24-21. Thomas back the other way. He'll get it off to Smith, now in the corner as they get it down there to Jones. Now back to Thomas, deep three ball. He can't get that one to go, and Nash with the board. And the fouls, he's going to get fouled from behind. Smith over the back. That'll be his second foul. And the team's seventh, I believe. Nope, six. Six. Both teams are six. So with 36 seconds to go here in the half, Borden with a three-point lead, 24-21. And they'll have possession of the basketball as they'll inbound here. It'll come in to Messi. He'll bring it up for the Braves. He'll cross the timeline and sets things up, gets it off to Kaysen Nash. Nash only with three points in the game to this point. 
They'll get it off to Agnew. But Fuller Tucker's been a hot guy yeah. for him. Now he'll hand it off to Schuler. Schuler far side to miss it. Back out to Nash here with 13 seconds, 12. Fuller Tucker with it. He'll hand it off to Schuler again. Now to Agnew. Now give and go. Agnew loses it. But he, Schuler gets it back. Gets it off Fuller Tucker. He'll pull it down. Shoot a 15 footer. Can't get it. And the board pulled down there by South Central Smith. And that's the end of the first half here as we'll go to the locker room. Boarding up three, 24 to 21. We'll add things up from the first half here and be back on your home for sectional number 61, West Washington live stream and WWS. Is your ride not as reliable as it used to be? Eddie Gilstraps is the place to go. With 80 years in the auto industry, we know how to get things done. At Eddie Gilstrap Motors, we have an unbeaten level of commitment to buyers. Unmatched customer service, a wide array of new and used inventory, and various financing options are just a few of the ways in which we serve our customers. Give us a call at 877-227-9421. That's 877-227-9421. Or just visit our website. We all make choices. When it comes to alcohol, kids make choices whether to drink or not. Bye, Dad. Bye-bye. Remember, I'm going to Alex's party tonight and sleeping over. Yeah, have fun. Hey, Em, have a seat for a second. Remind me about that party again. Alex is just and coming. adults make choices whether to talk about it. That's true of parents and every other trusted adult in a kid's life. Kids want to know our expectations when it comes to alcohol and other drugs. They want guidance and honest answers to their questions. And it makes a difference when the message is consistent and part of everyday conversations. So talk with your kids and help lead them on a positive path. Because when you talk, they hear you. For more information about talking with your kids about underage use of alcohol and other drugs, visit underagedrinking.samhsa.gov. Michael Long with American Family Insurance offers auto, home, business, farm, and life insurance, which includes motorcycles, boats, ATVs, UTVs, classic and antique autos, renters, manufactured homes, rentals, along with event coverage such as weddings, golf hole-in-ones, conferences, and much, much more. He's licensed in Indiana, Ohio, and Florida. For more information, look him up on Facebook to see insurance tips and to sign up for his agency giveaways. Michael Long, American Family Insurance, all your protection under one roof. I like the power deck. You lift it up, clean your deck out, then wash it out. And you know, I can change those blades in approximately five minutes. In our terrain, we have to have a mower that can back up quick, turn quick. Nothing's ever stopped that mower. When it comes to vaping, the truth can get clouded. So let's make it clear. Vaping is not safe for kids, teens, or young adults. It's just not. Because vaping can put microscopic particles into your lungs. And dangerous things like metals and volatile organic compounds into your body. And nicotine, the same highly addictive substance found in regular cigarettes. Nicotine can harm a person's brain development through their mid-20s. Affecting learning, memory, attention, and impulse control and priming the brain for other addictions. Vaping products also come in kid-friendly flavors that can make them appealing to youth. And many kids also use other drugs, like marijuana, in vaping devices. With appealing flavors, high nicotine levels, and lots of promotion on social media. Many kids think vaping is harmless, but it's not. So talk to your kids about the risks of vaping, because when you talk, they hear you. At Eddie Gilstrap, our customers are family. Rated in the top 6% nationwide in Ford dealers, we pride ourselves on our no-pressure environment, honesty, and integrity. Come see us today and discover why we're different. Eddie Gilstrap Motors. I'm David Calhoun. 
Grass Clippings LLC. During the summer, I'm on this thing eight, ten hours a day. I know the feel of it. Grasshopper means quality. They don't fall apart. I've looked at all of them in the industry. I don't think that's going to stand up to them. Link's Clothing and Shoes is proud to support West Washington Senator football and wish them a great season. Stop by and see us for all your school fan gear. We offer a wide variety of tees, hoodies, hats, and more. We also offer custom screen printing and embroidery for your team, business, or event. We are conveniently located on the north side of the Salem Square and have been serving our community for over 15 years. Our hours are Monday through Friday, 9 to 5.30, and on Saturdays, they're 9 to 3. Stop in or call us at 812-883-4154. That's 812-883-4154. Shop local and save. As your American Family Insurance agent, Michael Long can offer you dependable auto, home, business, and life insurance, as well as other insurance products. He's big enough to serve and small enough to care. His team and their unique backgrounds, trainings, and experiences have prepared them well to help meet your insurance needs. Additionally, as residents of your community, they understand how important it is to be there for you. Together, they are building strong partnerships that help everyone succeed. When it comes to your car insurance, you deserve more than a card tucked in your glove box. That's why American Family Car Insurance goes beyond a piece of paper or an app to give you smart, customized coverage and real peace of mind. No matter how your life changes, you can feel comfortable you will have the right auto insurance protection and support every step of the way. Not sure how much or what type of coverage is right for you? Michael Long is the person to talk to. Right, brothers. We're more than tractors. Stop in and take a look around. You'll be surprised. Right here on Highway 60 in Borden. Gates, Carnegie, Rockefeller. I'm not. Generous, caring, rich in spirit, I am. You don't have to be a person of great wealth to make an impact. When caring individuals give through a flexible, creative, capable organization known as a community foundation, our philanthropic potential is unlimited. As your local community foundation, we provide you the opportunity to permanently support the causes you care about both near and far. We do this by protecting and administering permanent funds through thoughtful grant making to improve the quality of life in the community we serve. Simply put, Donors who give through a community foundation build sustainable, permanent funds called endowments through contributions, big and small, to support organizations they care about most, forever. Through the generosity of our many donors and the responsible, informed investment of permanent funds, we will increase our grant-making ability for the benefit of our community for generations to come. All we need is you. What causes are you passionate about? What organization matters most to you? We can help you ensure your charitable interests are supported forever. Donors can give to an existing endowment or establish their own. Some choose to give now, while others make their gift later through their will or estate plan. To learn what your options are, talk to your community foundation. We're here to help you reach your philanthropic goals. If you love our community, let's leave our little corner of the world a bit better than we found it. Not just today, but for future generations too. The Washington County Community Foundation has been making our home a terrific place to live, work, and play since 1993 through the generosity of donors just like you. Why? Well, just like you, we also really love our community. Back here live at the half sectional 61 semifinal round here. Uh, the game featuring the South Central Rebels, the Borden Braves here. Borden with a three point advantage here at the half 24 to 21 as they lead it by three over the Rebels of South Central. Uh, in that first half of play, Fuller Tucker for Borden leading all scores with 15 points in the contest. Uh, 
Then Morden has uh, three other guys with three points. Uh, Schuler got a three-pointer. Kasem Nash has a field goal and a free throw for three. And uh, Keith, uh, Xander Keith, a three-pointer as well to uh, give them their 24 points. South Central led in scoring by Thomas. Uh, he's got three field goals, uh, three two-point field goals, one three-point uh, field goal, uh, and he was four or five from the line for 13. Uh, then uh, they got a three from Smith, uh, a field goal each for Jones and Kuiper, and one free throw for Hedden to give them their 21 points. So kind of a low-scoring affair. It's been the tale of uh, turnovers and points off of turnovers for both teams, uh, I think, Craig. Yeah, here yeah. In this first you half. Know, it, overall, they've shot pretty evenly. Um, you know, uh, <clears throat> South Central was 52% from the field, and the Braves were 38. So, I mean, it's it's fairly close overall between the between the two, but it's. Um, you know, a, a tale of two halves, I guess. We're going to see yeah. see how this half goes. Yeah, Fuller Tucker really went off. Uh, you know, South Central had held uh, Nash down, but Fuller Tucker uh, picked up the uh, scoring for Borden. So we'll see what happens here as both teams come back out with the original starters. Faree will get it in play for the Rebels. He'll drive down inside, got tied up. We're going to have a jump ball, and that's going to be a turnover. Another one for South Central as it'll go back to Borden on the alternating possession. So not what uh, the Rebels wanted to start the third quarter here. Fuller Tucker will bring it up for Borden. He'll cross the timeline and he'll dribble out. Now kicks it off to Missy in the corner. Missy with it. Gets it down low as it'll come in there to Schuler. Schuler around the screen there from Nash. Gets it back here to Missy. Missy will drive in, free throw line, jump stop, hands it off to Fuller Tucker. He can't score it though as that shot kind of altered and the rebound pulled down by Thomas. Back the other way for South Central. He'll get it to Kuiper. He'll pull it down in the lane, shoot it, can't get it. Agnew with the board for Borden. And Coach Nash will slow him down here a little bit. They'll hand it back off there to Schuler. Now back to Missy, far side to Fuller Tucker. Fuller Tucker with it off to Kaysom Nash. He'll shoot a deep three ball off the front of the rim, no good. Rebound pulled down by Jones. He'll hand it off to Thomas for the Rebels. Back over to Jones now. Jones will go in the corner to Faree. He'll make a nice move to the basket, and he gets fouled. As he goes up, I believe Agnew's going to pick up his first person. Yeah, Agnew was there with his hand up, but then reached down at it. So his first foul, team's first here of the second uh, half, and that will put Faree at the free throw line. Where he's a 67% free throw shooter on the year, averages 14.3 points a game, yet to score. Yeah, so. he hadn't scored yet, so his first one's up and it rims in. Got about every piece of the rim it could get. And it's 24-22, chance to pull South Central to within one here. If he can get this second free throw to go down. Second one's up and it's good. So he scores them both, 24-23, Borden a one-point lead here. They'll bring it back up the floor, Missy with it. He'll dribble far side, hand it off to Fuller Tucker. Tucker with it, gets it out to Nash. Nash back to Fuller Tucker. He drives, goes in strong, can't get the shot to go, and the rebound pulled down by Kuiper for the Rebels. He'll get it up quickly to Faree. Faree looking, now goes baseline to Hedden, stolen away from him. So second turnover by South Central. Nash will get it off to Agnew. Agnew to Missy. He'll dribble in, free throw line, hands it back to Nash. Nash hits it in the corner. Schuler with the three ball, and he hit it. His second three of the night. And it's 27-23. Doc Nash telling now the crowd to get up. And the boy, when he speaks, everybody from Morton listens, let me tell you. They get it off to Hedden to the Rebels. He'll hand it back to Thomas. Thomas draws the crowd back to Hedden. Hedden looking. Drives, spins on Fuller Tucker. Lost it, got it back. Goes up again, got it to go and one as he gets fouled. So Hedden scores it. And he'll get a free throw out of it. Going to be a foul on Casey Nash. Yeah, his second. Ethan Heaton only a 58% free throw shooter on the year. 
Yep, he steps back up there and hits a free. That one looks really good. Yeah, he's two of three tonight, so he's doing pretty good. 27-26, back to a one-point game. Braves back the other way. Fuller Tucker with it, far side. He'll kick it back out here as it comes back over to Schuler. Back over to Fuller Tucker, now to Nash. Back to Derek Fuller Tucker. He'll hand it back over to Missy. Missy will drive out. Now gives it back to Fuller Tucker. Fuller Tucker with it, looking, trying to get it to Nash. He does. And they'll send it far side to Schuler. Schuler wheels around, beat his man, almost tipped away there by Faree, but uh, Missy able to get it back for Borden. He'll kick it off there to Schuler. Back out high to Nash. Nash gets it out to Agnew. He'll drive, kicks it in the corner. Another three up there by Schuler, and he hit that one again. He's got three two. of three so yep. far from the three-point line. He's got two of them here in this quarter. 30 to 26. Three with it for the Rebels. He'll get it off as it goes over there to Jones. Jones dishes inside to Hedden. Ball tipped away by Agno. Another turnover by South Central. Up quickly to Tucker, and he scores it. So Fuller Tucker continues to score the basket. 17 so far in the game. 32-26, a six-point lead. Rebels back the other way, and it's going to be a foul called on number 31, Missy. He'll pick up his second. He's kind of overstepped and yeah. So uh, looked like Fuller Tucker stepped out. He kind of looked like he yeah. was nursing his knee a little bit as he goes out of the game. I think he kind of stepped a little weird. And another turnover. That's four here in this quarter for South Central as the Braves get it back. Keith with it hands it off to Nash. Nash gets cut off, gets it back out high there to Schuler. He'll get it to Messi, back to Agnew. Agnew gets it off. Keith with a deep three. He can't get it to go. Battle for the board, pulled down by Thomas. Thomas out on the run, drives it. Almost tipped it in, but he's going to get fouled. And he went into the bleachers yeah. pretty hard there. So Borden guilty of the foul. They're going to call Alex that on Schuler. That's his third. Alex Schuler, that's his third. Timeout going to be called here. It's going to be a full timeout. So with that, we're going to step aside, have a commercial break. As your American Family Insurance agent, Michael Long can offer you dependable auto, home, business, and life insurance, as well as other insurance products. He's big enough to serve and small enough to care. His team and their unique backgrounds, trainings, and experiences have prepared them well to help meet your insurance needs. Additionally, as residents of your community, they understand how important it is to be there for you. Together, they are building strong partnerships that help everyone succeed. When it comes to your car insurance, you deserve more than a card tucked in your glove box. That's why American Family Car Insurance goes beyond a piece of paper or an app to give you smart, customized coverage and real peace of mind. No matter how your life changes, you can feel comfortable you will have the right auto insurance protection and support every step of the way. Not sure how much or what type of coverage is right for you? Michael Long is the person to talk to. Three, two. All right, back here live, West Washington High School, sectional number 61. First semifinal round game of the night here between Borden and South Central. Borden has pushed it out to a 32-26 lead here as they lead by six here. 349 to go in the third quarter, but uh, Thomas at the line for the Rebels. Cole Thomas, the sophomore, he steps up there, knocks down the first free throw. He'll get another one here, so 32-27. Second free throws up, and it rims in. He got the roll, and it's 32-28. Back to a four-point lead here. A little pressure by the Rebels here. Kaysom Nash with it for the Braves. He'll get it across the timeline. Gets trapped over there now. Finally gets it away as he gets it to Missy for the Braves. In the corner it goes. 
Another three ball up for Borden, no good. And heading with the rebound, and he gets fouled as uh, Agnew got I'm a hold of him. Sure, Doc Nash is not going to be happy with that foul on Agnew. He was out of position the whole time. No, no reason to try to force your way into that one. Yeah, hadn't done a nice job getting position down there. South Central inbound. It'll come into three. He'll bring it up for the Rebels. The dribble's far side. It's cut off there. And he'll continue his attack. Tries to get it inside. Another turnover. And then Morton turned it right back over. Still turnovers, five yeah. to one so far yeah. in this half. That's so. what I was getting ready to say. That's only the first turnover of Borden in this half. South Central already with five. So uh, number 20, Jones to inbound for the Rebels. He'll get it in, comes in quickly to Thomas. Three-pointer up, he can't get it. Nash with the rebound for the Braves. 3-12 to go, Borden 32, South Central 28. Nash with it, kicks it off to Agnew. Agnew, far side to Missy. Now back over there to Keith. Keith looking, trying to find Nash. He does. He gets it to Nash baseline. Nice spin move there. He goes in strong and scores. So only his second field goal tonight. He's got five in the game. But he pushes it back up to a six-point lead, 34-28. Thomas spins, goes in the lane, throws up a runner. No foul called. And a rebound pulled down by Borden. Missy back up the floor with it quickly. He'll get it to Agnew. Agnew will drive. It's cut off, kicks it back out to Missy. The Braves just kind of stretch this one out a little bit at the moment. Yeah. Out six right now with the ball. Agnew will drive, gets cut off there, now gets it back out to Nash. Nash pulls it down, shoots it, and he's starting to heat up. Yep. That's just a two-point shot. Seven on the night so far for Kasem. So he drives it out to a 36-28 lead. Eight points, biggest lead of the night here for either team as the Rebels come back down the floor. They've had a little trouble scoring. Free will shoot the three. He can't get it to go. It bounces up high and hits the crossbar. So it'll go back to the Braves. Fuller Tucker back in for uh, Keith as Xander Keith will check out. South Central has gone cold. They're only yeah. shooting 20% in this half. So. Well, they've got one field goal this quarter. The rest of their scoring's all been on free throws. So Borden back with the ball. They get it to Agnew. They'll go baseline. Uh, 35 up with the shot. That's Schmidt. He scores his first bucket of the night. And it's 38-28, a 10-point lead. Timeout South Central with 1.39 to go here in the third quarter. It'll be a, is this a full timeout? Nope. Yep. Oh, full, full time, time out. So we'll step take I'm David Calhoun, Grass Clippings LLC. During the summer, I'm on this thing eight, ten hours a day. I know the feel of it. Grasshopper means quality. They don't fall apart. I've looked at all of them in the industry. I don't think that's going to stand up to them. You know, they've turned it over there. Right, right brother. Yeah. You know, five turnovers. We're more than trackers. Uh, that's killed Stop them, in and they take a look around. Fall, like you You'll be surprised right here on Highway 60 in Borden. I'm David Calhoun, Grass Clippings LLC. During the summer, I'm on this thing eight, 10 hours a day. I know the feel of it. Grasshopper means quality. They don't fall apart. I've looked at all of them in the industry. I don't think that's gonna stand up to them. Back to live action here on Ron Smith Court in T. Kermit Tower Gymnasium for six, sectional 61 action as the Borden Braves do lead by 10 over the South Central Rebels. Yeah, absolutely, uh, Craig. The, you know, like I said, the story for uh, South Central, as you mentioned, not, not shooting it real well right now. They've only got one field goal this quarter. The rest of their points have come on uh, five free throws, and uh, they need some buckets here. So. 10-point uh, lead by Borden, 38-28, Rebels with the ball. They'll get it off far side to Smith. He'll kick it back out high as it comes to 23, Bogan. Now over to Hedden. Now out to Kuiper. Kuiper drives, pulls up, shoots it, got it to go. Nice shot there by Kuiper as he scores his fourth point of the night. And it's 38-30. Braves back the other way. Missy with it. He'll get it off to Fuller Tucker. Back over to Missy. And a whistle. 
Something on the floor yeah. over there. <laughs> Somebody rolled a quarter out there or something. The official, <laughs> it was kind of a weird whistle because yeah. nobody knew what was going yeah, on. Well. <laughs> and uh, he just st stopped the game. He saw it. And now we find another one here. Somebody's got change in their pocket or something. Well, I think it's the off the pom-poms. I think they're. Oh, that could be where they're picking it up off their shoes or yeah. something. So something shiny. I know that. I saw the shininess over there. Braves inbound, they'll get it into Fuller Tucker. He'll beat everybody to the bucket. Goes in strong, but he's gonna get fouled there as Thomas will pick up his first personal foul. Not a bad foul there no. because no, only the Fuller, team's first. Fuller Tucker was going to the rim, so not a bad foul. Make him go to the free throw line and earn it there. Yeah, Tucker will go up to the line. He's one of two there tonight is Derek Fuller Tucker, so he'll step up there. First free throws up, and it's good. Only a 68% free throw shooter on the year, so. Yeah, not one of his strong points, but he got that first one to go. Chance to push it back up to a 10-point lead here with a minute to go here in this uh, third quarter. Second free throw coming. He'll step up to the line. Isaac, that's a fly, and that one goes in as well, so he gets them both to go. And it's 40 to 30 here with under a minute to go in this first or third quarter of play. Thomas back the other way for South Central. Missy on him, he'll get it to Kuiper. Kuiper will drive, goes down to the baseline, shoots it up, and got a shooter's roll there. Yeah, nice bucket by Kuiper, gives him six. He scores again, 40-32. Missy with it for the Braves, now off to Agnew on the far wing. He'll kick it back to Fuller Tucker. Little Tucker hands it off to Casey Nash. Nash back out to Missy, now to Agnew. Agnew will hand it off to Fuller Tucker. Tucker on the drive, finds a wide open man, drives the basket, can't get the bucket. Fuller Tucker had the rebound, but stolen out of there by Thomas. Thomas back the other way, jump stop, goes in and scores. And a shot at the buzzer, no good by the Braves. So we go into the fourth quarter with South Central down by four as uh, Borden leads at 40, to, or down by six, 40-34 here as we go to the fourth quarter. Michael Long with American Family Insurance offers auto, home, business, farm, and life insurance, which includes motorcycles, boats, ATVs, UTVs, classic and antique autos, renters, manufactured homes, rentals, along with event coverage such as weddings, golf hole-in-ones, conferences, and much, much more. He's licensed in Indiana, Ohio, and Florida. For more information, look him up on Facebook to see insurance tips and to sign up for his agency giveaways. Michael Long, American Family Insurance, all your protection under one roof. Four, three, two, all right, back there live, 40 to 34, Borden with a six point lead as we head into this fourth and what could be the final quarter. I, I never like to say that because I usually <laughs> jinx myself and get overtime. But uh, anyway, uh, Rebels were able to cut into it. Borden had as high as a 10 point lead <laughs> and uh, South Central got the last two buckets of that third quarter there to cut it down to six. Well, when we talk about winning quarters, yeah. you know, South Central won the first one, but Borden has won the last, last two. two yeah. So 16 to 13, Borden uh, winning that quarter by three. So they build their lead up to six here at the end of the uh, third quarter. Rebels with the basketball to start the fourth quarter. Thomas with it, gets it down in the corner there. As they get it to uh, Smith, they get it down inside. And number 23, Bogan scores his first bucket of the night. And it comes at a good time. So down to a four-point lead now, 40-36, as South Central still hanging around. Nash draws a double team there. They get it off to Missy. Now over to Fuller Tucker. They'll back it back out. Now they get it back to Missy. Back to Fuller Tucker. He'll get it off to Schuler. Schuler. 
Wheels around, takes it in the lane, throws up a runner, can't get it to go. Battle for the board, and Kuiper pulls it down and out of there for the Rebels. He'll bring it up, drives, and almost loses it. It's going to be a foul. And we're going to have a reach foul there. Yep. On Missy. Missy, that's, that's his third. Foul's on number 31, Only the team, that's team six. Yeah. Six fouls for Borden in this half. Only one for South Central. South Central, yeah. So Smith will inbound for the Rebels. He'll get it in. It'll come in to Hedden. Hedden back to Smith now. Smith looking. Hands it back to Hedden. He'll hand it off to Thomas. Thomas wheels around. Takes it in the lane. Dishes out to Hedden. Now over to Kuiper. Kuiper pulls it down. Shoots a hard shot from the free throw line. Can't get the... Shot to go, and Nash gets the rebound for the Braves. Borden back the other way. Nash will drive. Kiss out to Agnew. He looked at a three. Now hands it back out to Missy. Now off to Fuller Tucker. Fuller Tucker, far side to Nash. Nash back out to Fuller Tucker. He beats everybody. Now dishes it out. Shuler looked at another three. Back to Fuller Tucker. Now Agnew will shoot the three ball. He can't get it to go, but Nash with the board. He'll pull it down, gets it back out to Schuler. Now he'll hand it back out to Missy. Back over here to Schuler, back to Missy. Missy off the floor, Tucker. Now out to Casey Nash. Nash drives, beats everybody, goes in, and one, and he's fouled. That Nash. gives Casey nine on the night. A great job driving the lane there. That foul gonna be called against Smith, that's his third team's second, and Nash with a chance to complete the three-point play here. Back up to a six-point lead here, 42-36. Nash can make it seven if he can get this free throw to go down. And he does. 43-36. Borden with that seven point lead. Thomas back the other way for the Rebels. Gets it in the paint there to Bogan. Now back out to Hedden off to Thomas. Thomas over to Smith. He'll drive, pulls up, runner in the lane, got it to go. So Smith scores again, hits fifth point. And it's 43-38. Nash back the other way, dishes it back out to Shuler. Now back to Nash. That draws the double team now. Now he'll kick it off to Missy. Fuller Tucker in the lane. He'll pull up, hard shot. Can't get it to go. Agnew though, however, with the rebound. Dishes it out to Schuler. Three ball and he got it. That's his four three pointer. And it's back up to an eight point lead, 46-38. Bogan with it, hands it off to Thomas. He'll shoot the three, in and out, no good. And a battle for the board. It's going to go against uh, foul called. And it's going to go against Agnew, I believe. Yep, 24. It's his third. I don't know about that one. He had yeah. position under there. Him and Hedden were kind of fighting for the ball, but yeah. uh, he gets called for the foul, so Hedden will go back to the free throw line. He's been up there three times, hit two of three at the line, so... Averages five a game, so this first one here would give him his average if he knocks it in. Right. One and one free throw. He got the first one to go, so he'll get another one. Forty-six thirty-nine. Chance to cut it back to a six-point lead if he can get this one to go. It's up, and that was good as well. So he gets them both. 46 to 40. Braves with the ball. 4.57 to go here in the game. Borden up 46 to 40 over South Central. Missy with it far side. Gets it off the shooter. Will Will around. Almost lost it. He does now in a steal. Thomas comes away with it. He'll drive. Goes in the lane. And it's stolen back from him. As Agnew comes away with it. He'll get it off to Nash. Nash gets it off to Agnew. Finds Missy, now out to Fuller Tucker. And he'll get Thomas as he tried to go on the attack. 
And Thomas fouled him there, so his second personal on Thomas. Doc Nash is wanting his team to attack oh, that yeah. once they get, once they break it, he wants them to keep attacking. Team's third foul on South Central, so Braves will have it out of bounds on the far side of the court here. Fuller Tucker gets it in Schuler. Back to Fuller Tucker, he beats everybody, reverse layup and got it. Gives him 21. 48 to 40. Smith with it now for the Rebels. Gets it off to Thomas. Thomas out to Hedden. Heading over to Kuiper. Kuiper pulls it down. He'll shoot a three now off the mark. Air ball. Rebound by Smith, however, up and in. And a timeout called here by South Central. Full timeout. So we'll take a break here. It's Borden four. Lynx Clothing and Shoes carries a wide variety of items from name brand clothing and shoes to sports apparel and sporting goods. We offer custom screen printing and embroidery, free gift wrapping alternations and layaway. Our hours are Monday through Thursday, 9 to 5.30, Friday 9 to 6, and Saturday 9 to 5. We are conveniently located on the north side of the Salem Square and are a family owned and operated business. Stop by and see us today, 812-883-4154. Two. All right, back here live, West Washington High School, sectional 61 action as the Borden Braves lead 48-42, 3.56 to remain here in this fourth quarter as the Braves have had it out as much to a 10-point lead, but every time they get it out there, South Central kind of comes back and they've got it down to six here, 48-42, Braves with the basketball. Agnew will bring it up for Borden as he'll cross the timeline, hands it off to Missy. Missy with it out high, looking, trying to get it off. He does to Fuller Tucker. Now he'll find Kaysom Nash with it. Nash will beat his man to the hole, but Fuller Tucker with a rebound basket back up and in. 50 to 42, Braves back to an eight point lead. Three with it, looking far side, gets it off there to Kuiper, out to Thomas, back over to Free. He'll step in, hands it off to Hedden, back out to Free. Gonna be and a travel. He travels. So they're That's up their, to seven. I've got seven yep. in this half, six in the first half 13. for 13. Yeah, that's killed them. So 50 42 here, and a chance for Morton to build on this eight point lead here. 312 to go in the quarter. Braves will inbound. It'll come into Missy. He'll get it up. Crosses the timeline. Gets it off to Fuller Tucker. Fuller Tucker with it. And a foul going to be called. As they're going to get free. Free on that one. Third personal. Only, only the team's fourth. So I think. I think uh, South Central coach Greg Robinson's trying to get, you know, let yeah, those kids know we got fouls to give. We're going to have to because it may turn into a free throw game here. Fuller Tucker beats everybody, drives, goes in, and gets a wild running shot to go. I tell you, he is hot right now. Well, and you know, he's breaking people down off the dribble. Yeah. One on one, they just can't stop him. Thomas now with a deep three, can't get that one. Nash with the rebound. 10 point lead again here by the Braves, 52 42. Fuller Tucker with it, finds a man open in the corner, gets it to Missy. He'll drive, pulls up, shoots a one hander, and he can't save it. Nash tries to save it inbounds. It'll go back to the Rebels as Casey uh, just couldn't get it inbounds. So 52 42, 227 to go. Xander uh, Keith will check back in for. The Braves, or Schmidt back in for the Braves. Yeah. Back the other way now, Free with it for South Central. Gets it off to Thomas, almost stolen. And they're going to get Missy for 
his fourth personal. Missy's done a great job yeah. on Thomas all night. So, I mean, it, to only have four so far, that's, that's a good night. Yeah. Yeah, especially guarding Thomas. Free throw up by Thomas is good. Fifty-two forty-three. He'll get another one here. Second free throw in the air, and he got it to go as well. Fifty-two forty-four, an eight-point lead. Braves with it. Two seventeen to go. They'll get it up to Nash. He'll shoot a deep three and banks it in. Fifty-five forty-four here. Biggest lead of the night here at eleven. Deep three up by Faree, no good. Rebound Nash in the corner with 1.58 to go. Nash will bring it across the timeline. Dribbles, now kicks it off to Agnew. He'll hand it back out to Shuler. You hear the uh, board and cheer block now going wild. Shuler gets it off to Nash, now off to Missy. He'll drive, dishes in the corner. He gets it down there. And a timeout called by Coach Nash. Doc's going to burn a timeout here, 30-second timeout. With 1.38 to go here in the fourth quarter. 55 44. He's looking to slow this game down. He, you know, he's wanting to keep that clock running, doesn't want it to stop at all. So he called that timeout to save the possession there. So those of you watching the first game, uh, second game there is a new link. Uh, already on the IHSAA TV website, so go there. Um, second game is Lanesville and Rock Creek, so um, if you're tuning in, this uh, stream will end and we'll start the second one um, once that game, once this game right. is over. So just letting you know, don't think you're going to see both games here on this link. The second one is there, um, so search for it and it'll be there. It's under sectional 61 and it has both Rock Creek and Lanesville's name listed. So you can search all three of those things and it should come up. Yeah, Fuller Tucker up to, uh, I've got him for 27. Is that what you've got? I've got him for 25. 25, yeah, yep. you're right, you're right. I miscalculated there, but he's had quite the ball game. Oh, here, yeah. Picking up the slack for Borden. So Braves two inbound here with 138 to go up 11. 55-44, they get it into Nash off to Fuller Tucker. He'll back it out. Now hands it back to Nash. Nash far side. Gets it off. Now to Agnew. Agnew back over to Schuler. Schuler gets fouled there as they have to come out and attack him. Stewart going to pick up that foul. So the team's fifth. So no free yeah, throws. Still yet. not shooting free throws yet. Still got to get two more. Agnew to inbound with an 11-point lead, 55-44. He'll get it in the backcourt to Casey Nash. Nash gets it back to Agnew. Almost stolen from him, but they're going to get Faree for his fourth personal as he tried to steal it there with 1.15 to go. So the next foul, then we'll be shooting free throws. So. 16 foul. Braves two inbound here with 1.15 to go. Up 11, they'll get it in to Nash. He, get, he draws a quick double team and another foul gonna be called. That's gonna, gonna go against Jones, Jones, his first. So in case of Nash, probably not the one on the team you wanna foul. No, probably not. <laughs> He'll have one and one free throw opportunity here. He'll step up to the line. Scores the first one. Gives him 14. Second half, the Braves are perfect. Four of four from the free throw line. And he'll get another one coming here. 56 to 44. Second one's up, and it's good, too. And a full timeout called here 
by the Braves. 57-44. We'll step away, take a quick break, and be back here on your home for Section 60. Some people see a huddle in the locker room. We see a second classroom. Some see a student athlete on the court. We see a future leader in the community. You see, high school sports in Indiana are special. That's because they're about learning and growing, not just winning and losing. Fans, I'm Commissioner Paul Nidig. Support education-based athletics in Indiana by buying a ticket to your high school's next athletic event. Two. All right, back here live sectional 61 action here at West Washington High School. Boarding out to a 57-44, 13-point lead here by the Braves with 113 remaining in the contest. And South Central kind of running out of time here. They, uh, they've they stayed close uh, a couple different times. Borden pushed it out to 10 and then they would cut it back to six, but never could get any closer. And now Borden has pushed it out to this 13-point lead. Rebels will inbound. They'll get it into Faree. He'll bring it across the timeline, gets it off to Thomas. Thomas in the corner, back to Faree. He'll go baseline. Now throws up a wild shot, can't get it to go. Battle for it, tipped around, still fighting for it. Finally pulled down there by Stewart. He'll shoot it now, can't get it to go. And the rebound by Nash inside and he's going to be fouled by Stewart, I believe. Yep, that's who they, oh no, they give it to Thomas. Yep, Thomas got that his, his third. third. Nash will step back up to the free throw line here for a couple more free throws. He's four or five from the line to this point. Five and six now. Team is perfect in the second half after struggling in the first half, one of six. So. Yeah. And we'll get another one here. Second one's up and it's good. And that gets him a season average of 17, so. 59 to 44. Agnew will check out the game. In comes the senior Brody Kennedy, the 6'1 yep. senior. South Central inbounds, gets it to free. He'll pull it down, picks it off. Thomas gets, draws a crowd. He dishes it out. Three ball in the air there, air ball. And it goes off to Thomas out of bounds. Shot was up by Jones. Didn't draw iron, bounced off the backboard. So Borden will get it back to 40 seconds. And they'll get it in to Nash and they foul him again. Trying to extend this game out. You know, they're, yeah, they're down 15. Yeah, too late for that though. Yeah. So that's Jones' second foul. And Nash just building his stats. Derek Fuller Tucker checks out with 25 in the game. Number 33, Lewis will check in for Gordon. Cole Thomas checks out with 19 in the game. Nice job by him. Piper also coming out with six. Nash will go back to the free throw line here. First free throws up and it's good. 60-44. And Nash will get another one here. Nice job by South Central to get there guys off yeah. the floor, get them a standing ovation. Great job by those guys. Second free throws up and it's good too. So Kaysen hits them both. Doc Nash does the same thing. Gets his yep. starters off the floor. Yep. 
South Central back up with it. They'll hand it off. Number 33 with a deep three ball. No good. Rebound pulled down there by Lewis for the Braves. He'll get it off to Missy. And he'll hand it off to Bannett, who checked in as well. 21 seconds back to Missy. Missy with it on the attack now. Gets it off to Bannett. Back to Missy. Eight seconds, seven seconds. Looks like Morton's going to get this victory here tonight. 61 to 44 over South Central. And they'll advance to the sectional final on Monday night here at West Washington. And they'll play the winner of this next game. So we're going to take a break, add things up, take a little break ourselves. We'll be back here with your post game report in the second game. Gates, Carnegie. Rockefeller, I'm not. Generous, caring, rich in spirit, I am. You don't have to be a person of great wealth to make an impact. When caring individuals give through a flexible, creative, capable organization known as a community foundation, our philanthropic potential is unlimited. As your local community foundation, we provide you the opportunity to permanently support the causes you care about both near and far. We do this by protecting and administering permanent funds through thoughtful grant making to improve the quality of life in the community we serve. Simply put, donors who give through a community foundation build sustainable, permanent funds called endowments through contributions big and small to support organizations they care about most, forever. Through the generosity of our many donors and the responsible, informed investment of permanent funds, we will increase our grant-making ability for the benefit of our community for generations to come. All we need is you. What causes are you passionate about? What organization matters most to you? We can help you ensure your charitable interests are supported forever. Donors can give to an existing endowment or establish their own. Some choose to give now, while others make their gift later through their will or estate plan. To learn what your options are, talk to your community foundation. We're here to help you reach your philanthropic goals. If you love our community, let's leave our little corner of the world a bit better than we found it. Not just today, but for future generations too. The Washington County Community Foundation has been making our home a terrific place to live, work, and play since 1993 through the generosity of donors just like you. Why? Well, just like you, we also really love our community. All right, back here live for our post game report here tonight as the uh, Borden Braves advance here 61 to 44 over South Central for the uh, Rebels in a losing effort here tonight. Uh, they were led in scoring by uh, Thomas uh, as he uh, finished the game with four uh, two-point field goals, one three-pointer. He was eight of nine from the free throw line. He finishes the game with uh, 19 points. Cole Thomas, the uh, sophomore guard for the Rebels. He was the only player for them in uh, double figures with that 19. Uh, next uh, score for them, Smith had two field goals, one three-pointer for seven. Um, Piper had three field goals for six. Uh, Free was two of two from the line. He had two points. Jones with a field goal for two. Uh, Bogan with a field goal for two. And then Hedden had one uh, two-point field goal. Four of five from the free throw line for six to give South Central 44 points on the night. For the victorious Borden Braves, they were led in scoring three players in double figures, but they were led tonight by Caleb, or uh, yeah, Fuller Tucker, as uh, he, Derek Fuller Tucker, he had 11 two-point field goals, uh, three of four from the free throw line. He finishes with 25 points in the game. Kasem Nash, uh, uh, after a slow start, he had four field goals, one three-pointer, eight of nine from the line, 19 points for Kasem in the ball game. And then Schuler had four three-pointers for 12. Um, we had uh, Keith had one three-pointer for three, and uh, 
rounding out the score. Schmidt had one field goal for two to give them 61. So they win it here tonight, 61-44 in our first semifinal game of the night. Back for more action, we'll switch over to the second stream. Um, be live here in about 20 minutes with the game. Yeah. So give us some time to get some things set up and ready to go. But we will be live there. So look forward to seeing everybody.